hey y'all welcome back to my channel so this set is a set that i've actually already done before on the same person last year we did it in baby blue and i'm gonna insert a picture and this time we decided to do it in pink so i already prepped her nails and i already placed her tips on the tips that i use are the flat and square tips from tulip i've been loving these tips lately like these are the only tips that i've really just been picking up and normally I was a BT art box girl. The natural curve tips were my go-to. Um, and I still use those depending on what type of nail beds I'm working with. But lately I've just been using those. And my yeah, my Mia Secret primer is what I've been using for the longest. This clear is Mia Secret. The reason why I was shaking it on my brush is because I was get, giving it time to solidify um, and then when I placed it on the nail I kind of held it in place too to try to get give it time to solidify so it's not too runny when I go to work with it um, my brush is also from nail supply glamour where what size is this this is a size 12 but even though this is a size 12 it's kind of made big because I got a size 12 that I got from Tulip and it's way smaller than this brush. But I like it still. Um, my monomer that I'm using is um, Nail Supply Glamour. At first I was using, what was I using? KDS. But I didn't like it anymore and it was sold out from where I was getting it. So I was just like, well, let me go back to the OG. For the most part on this set, I did a 2B method. I am a strong believer in not using too, too many beads to complete a set. Granted, whenever you first start off, use however many beads you need to. But once you start becoming more experienced and just more aware of your process, I don't think you should spend too much time on application because application already takes forever. If you're using five, 10 B's, it's like, uh, eh. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it's, at some point I start to work on speed and just being consistent. So yeah, I did mostly just to be method. If I needed a little bit more, I just add a little bit more. So you see how I'm holding it on the surface? That's That helps me so that the acrylic isn't sliding all over the place. While you guys are watching my application, I just want to say thank you so much. We just hit 10,000 subscribers. That is so crazy and it all happened so fast because I just made a video during the giveaway for reaching 1,000 subscribers and it hasn't even been that long. So I just want to say thank you guys for all of your support and whoever likes and comments and shares my videos. Thank you guys so much. And I'm just super appreciative. On this video, I decided to leave the application in real time. And also, I wanted to keep my acrylic in frame so you can see me dipping. I was going to put my monomer in frame. Well, I thought it was in frame and it wasn't. But I will do more videos so you can see me go into my monomer as well as my acrylic. Notice whenever I place a bead down, my first contact points are the sides. 
I go to the sides, push product back into the center, right? Then I go to the top of that bead and I blend out kind of like that harsh line and I push product up into my apex. That's what I'm doing now. Now I'm going in on my sides and keeping everything in the shape of the tip. And then I go to the bottom of the nail and I thin out the acrylic at the top. Because I want the um, end of my nail to be kind of thin. So now I'm just smoothing everything over, making sure everything is in shape. That's what I focus on the most. And then I get rid of the excess acrylic. When it comes to your application, you really just have to sit down and practice your liquid to powder ratio because you have to not only work at the speed of the acrylic, but you also have to keep moving around. You can't stay in one spot for too long or you can't leave that acrylic in one spot for too long and expect to come blend it out five minutes later, you know? So you always have to keep moving around the nail I don't never just stay in one spot and stay there for the longest. You have to check all angles, continuously blend. Application is very important. Personally, I love for my acrylic to kind of dry on the faster side. That's why I don't really buy any brands that cater to beginners because normally those kind of promote, oh, it look how long I have to shape this nail, sculpt this nail, and it's been X, Y, and Z amount of time. 
I don't want my acrylic to take forever to dry. I need my acrylic to be drying as soon as I put it down. So that's why I don't really buy any brands that cater to beginners because normally beginner friendly powders take forever to dry. Now, don't get me wrong, some of them dry uh, faster but most of the time, child, they don't. I filed and shaped her nails off camera so that I can focus on the design portion of this video. But I'm still going to show you guys this part. Don't be in the comments talking about my polish bottles because I know how they look. Okay? You don't have to comment how they look. Anyway, I'm using my paint palette to place these colors down. She said she wanted pink, right? So I didn't know. Well, she said she don't want it too light. She didn't want it too dark. So I just decided to start mixing. And we ended up with this Pepto-Bismol pink, y'all. But it's, it was cute. So I, I wasn't mad at it. So now that we have the color that we wanted, I actually decided to paint her nails with some protein bun. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes whenever I'm drawing anything or I'm layering up piles of polish and gel paint, sometimes it doesn't cure all the way or it doesn't stick properly to the nail and protein bun helps with that. They do promote it as primer and something you can use before um, gel. So I do recommend trying it if you've been having those same problems. And I just use one coat. And as y'all can see, I'm just slapping it on. You can place it carefully, but I just slap it on. <laughs> All right, so now I'm taking my pink and you can do any type of layout you want it. I just went with the layout I already did from the previous set we had. So the pinky, I'm going to do a full layer of pink and then the other ones you'll see how I kind of break it up. But the bandana is going over the pink. So I did that and I do two layers of it and... Let me just tell y'all, drawing is so stressful for me. Um, I need to invest in some really good art brushes. I just ordered two from A Galore. I can't wait till they get here. I'm going to let you guys know how those worked out. But whenever I'm drawing anything, my hands just start to shake so bad. And the lines be looking crazy. So, I cannot wait to get these new brushes and I just pray 
that they help. And then I didn't realize how hard bandana is to draw because me personally, I can do straight lines very good with my brushes. But whenever I have to twist and turn, it's like my paint strokes kind of get wobbly and not clean and not sharp. And I just end up halfway through just not giving up but being like okay that's good enough because i'm not gonna spend any more time on this and especially when you have clients back to back i'm not saying just throw anything on their nails but you have to think about time so at one point i was just like okay i can't keep trying to draw this same print over and over again it's gonna be cute in the end i just have to stop thinking so hard about it so I liked how they turned out, but I know if I either had some decals or more time, I definitely could have did them better. And especially I could have added more of the design on there. And it's okay though, but yeah. And another thing too, okay, so that pink y'all see was just regular gel polish, right? Whenever you start mixing gel polishes and for some reason it they get it get a lot of air bubbles in the polish. So not only do I have to worry about the air bubbles and brush them out, but dust is constantly flying everywhere. All up in the shop. Dust is everywhere, right? So not only do I have to worry about the air bubbles. I got to worry about the dust and lint. See, it's an air bubble on that nail. I just filled it in. Y'all, it was killing me. It was killing me. The dust was going crazy. That made me so mad. Dust was everywhere. But I just, once, sometimes once you put the top coat over it, it soothes all of that out. So you can't really tell for real. But it was driving me crazy to have to paint over it, though. But anyway, this brush right here I'm using, I just got it from Amazon. It's a um, double-ended brush. The other end is a 3D art brush. And I just was using it to block the color on. I wasn't really too focused about the lines being too straight because wherever the lines are, crystals are going right there. So that's why I try not to stress too much about that because I knew it was going to get covered up. Okay, here comes the stressful part. I'm using the same white from earlier. That black is from D&D as well, but I also have a black paint pot that I borrowed from my coworker, and I also borrowed her A Galore brush. So that's why I was saying earlier that I wanted to buy one because when I used this one, I was like, okay, this is definitely better than some of the other brushes I've been using. So, I was looking at a reference, but y'all, I kid you not, the reference was so hectic to look at, and I was just like, you know what, I'm just finna wing it, because it was it was gonna stress me out. And right now, you're just gonna witness me try to do this bandana print, and <laughs> pray for the best. Another thing I want to mention is I don't think I want to do nails on clients anymore for YouTube because they're just so unpredictable. Either they're moving too much, they're too stiff, they're just doing too much. So I am going to invest in a realistic hand to practice on. 
So that way I can do whatever designs I want and I can take my time and actually make sure it's perfect. Well, not per perfect, but close to it at least. So yeah, I will be getting one of those hands. I already have one, but it's one of those cheap ones from um, Sally's that's super, super stiff. Y'all know the one that you use for your state board. Yeah, one of those. And I need to get one with the posable fingers and it's soft silicone. That way I can, you know, move the fingers out my way, whatever. But yeah, I, I'm just, I will only film on certain clients now. Lately, I was trying to do film whenever I can so that I always have videos to upload. But everybody don't hold their hand right. And that's on a regular day basis, whether I'm recording or not everybody don't know proper etiquette whenever you get your nails done so i would rather just do it on a practice hand be able to take my time make sure the video quality is perfect you know make sure everything is running smoothly instead of just trying to tell my client hey keep your hand in frame right here hey you've been a little bit too stiff can you please relax i'm just sick of it. Y'all, I don't know what happened, but whenever I put, so these nails are going to be matte, right? Whenever I put the matte top coat on top of it, it smeared my whole design. And my coworker was saying something about, oh, you have to wipe the nails off first if you're going to use matte. But I didn't always have to do that. So I was so I was so confused onto why it made my whole design smear. You can't tell too bad, but you can definitely tell. And I was so sad and I was not about to wipe it off and start over. No, I was not about to do that. I'm still happy about how they came out, but that part really just blew me. And then I didn't record putting the crystals on because y'all know how I do that. I do the same thing, but I just put them wherever the lines are. <laughs> 